Hey guys, John here, and welcome to my unboxing and first time playing the SNES Classic. I know a lot of people have already had this for a while, but they were luckier than me. I wasn't lucky, I didn't get one until now, but I'm super excited that I do have one, and I hope that you guys will enjoy it as well. I haven't moved past this screen yet, I wanted to experience that with you guys. Uh, but first, I'm going to just show you a quick little set of clips that I took of me taking it out of the box. And now we're ready to take a look at this thing in action. Uh, I've got my HDMI cable plugged in, my usual recording setup here, and I'm gonna hit English. And now we see the main freaking screen. Look at this. So yeah, you see this list is in alphabetical order. I believe you can also sort by two player games, recently played, times played, release dates, publisher, and then back to title again. That's a really cool feature. Uh, we're gonna go through them alphabetically here just to show each one of them off here. So we've got Contra 3, The Alien of Wars, one of the first console games I ever played. That and Super Mario All-Stars were the first two games I ever played. Donkey Kong Country is the first one I ever owned myself. Uh, after experiencing it, I knew I wanted an SNES and my mom Got me one for my birthday. It had Donkey Kong Country with it, and we had a lot of fun playing that game back in the day, but we were really bad at it at first. <laughs> um, but yeah, great freaking game. If you haven't played Donkey Kong Country before, you owe it to yourself. Contra 3 is pretty hard. Donkey Kong Country 3 can be hard, but more than anything, it's just a really, really fun time. Uh, Earthbound is a game I never played a lot of, but uh, it's highly regarded as perhaps the most underrated uh, RPG of all time and a real cult classic among a lot of people. F-Zero was the game that started the F-Zero series uh, and a uh, pretty solid game. I've played the remake, not remake, the port that they did for Game Boy, but uh, it be interesting to play it straight on here in its original form. Uh, Final Fantasy 3 is the first time, the only time? No, not the only time, but the first time that Final Fantasy was on a Nintendo console, uh, of the main series anyway. 
and then later there were Crystal Chronicles on GameCube and uh, Tactics Advance on Game Boy Advance and uh, Tactics Advance 2 on the DS. But Final Fantasy 3, which I believe, unless I'm mistaken, was the first Final Fantasy game remade for SNES. I'm not really sure how that works. I'm not, I, I don't quite remember the timeline. Anyway, it's one of the originals. That's all that you need to know. Uh, <laughs> Kirby Superstar. This game is interesting. This game, it says eight games in one, and that's true. It's kind of a bunch of small games where there's a different gimmick in each one and you're trying to complete different tasks with Kirby. Pretty interesting. Uh, Kirby's Dream Course. Now this game is a blast. This game is sort of a golf adventure. Um, not in the traditional sense, <laughs> in the slightest. But uh, basically, you're trying to get ball-shaped Kirby into the hole at the end while getting maximum points. And uh, it is quite interesting indeed. Mega Man X, which is when uh, the games begin to differ away from the original Mega Man series. They brought in new characters, new styles, new gameplay, and uh, it's quite a good game. Quite a good game. Uh, Secret of Mana. Now this game literally just came out a few days ago, a couple days ago, uh, as a remake for PS4 and Steam. I think just those two. And uh, so it'd be interesting to see the differences between the two and the comparisons. But this is the original SNES version, so that's pretty neat. Uh, Star Fox, which as a lot of you know, Star Fox 64 is my favorite game of all time. I don't really have a good reason why, it just is. And uh, so this is the game that started it all. Uh, not as huge a fan of this one because this game is extremely difficult. Uh, but uh, definitely a classic nonetheless, and I look forward to checking it out again. Uh, and the real draw for this uh, console for a lot of people is Star Fox 2. Star Fox 2 was never released. It was mostly finished, but then dropped right before it was time to put on the finishing touches and release it. And uh, later they would take some of the ideas from it to make Star Fox Command for the DS, which was not a good game. Um, but anyway, when they decided to do this SNES Classic, they decided to finish Star Fox 2 and release it as part of the collection on this uh, SNES Classic. And that's really neat. So this is the official finished version. It's not some ROM that has been patched or, or done by the community. This is literally the finished completed version by Nintendo and that's really awesome. The reason it shows it as kind of, I guess, locked is because you have to complete the first level of Star Fox before you unlock Star Fox 2, okay? Also, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter series kind of speaks for itself. It's been around forever. Fun, fast fighting gameplay. Those were three Fs. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, uh, I look forward to checking it out in this form. Uh, Castlevania 4, Super Castlevania 4, I should say. Uh, definitely a really, really good game. I've played it quite a bit. Never beat it. It's very difficult. But uh, of all the Castlevanias, I feel like this one has a lot of unique uh, additions to it. And uh, I think it's definitely worth a play if you haven't checked it out before. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll actually beat it for once. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Now this game is known as one of the hardest games of all time. So can't wait to rage at this one. Um, <laughs> this one, uh, this one's very difficult, classic, uh, fighter platformer kind of combo. Basically, you're, you're having to fight your way through, kind of like Castlevania, except way less forgiving, I find, which is saying something. Uh, Super Mario Kart. So, funny thing about this is I had not too awful long ago played through this game, sort of. I did all four cups on 100cc. And I did videos on it and I raged a lot. Those videos are actually going to be reappearing here on this channel because I did them on a different channel. Uh, so you'll see those, but they are not recorded on the SNES Classic. Uh, so a little bit difference, a little bit of a difference there, but not much. Uh, I won't be revisiting this uh, to record the whole thing, but uh, we'll definitely take a look at it anyway. This game is, is fun, but it can be very frustrating. It's much more fun if you're playing with a friend 
because then you're kind of racing each other and not just struggling through with the nonsense that the <laughs> the higher difficulties can bring on. Uh, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. This game is very interesting. This was uh, Mario's first foray into RPGs. It would later spawn uh, sort of spiritual successors in the form of Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi. Those are all RPG-based uh, games that came from the idea of this one. But this game in and of itself is quite good, and I uh, definitely think I will be doing a playthrough of this at some point, and I'm glad I can do it, you know, on this SNES Classic. Super Mario World, this one kind of speaks for itself. This one's been around forever. Everybody knows this game. It's, it's considered by many to be the greatest Mario game of all time. Uh, I've never beaten it, so that's another thing I look forward to trying to do at some point because, um, yeah, this one, uh, this one gets challenging at various points, and, uh, I, uh, I'm not great at 2D platformers, I have found, now that, especially if I've gotten older. When I was younger, I think I was better at these games than I am now. <laughs> I'm just too old, man. <laughs> anyway, um, Super Metroid. Uh, this was... I'm trying to remember. Was this a remake of the original Metroid, or was this a separate game? I think this was sort of both? I don't know. Anyway, this basically is the game that people know the best when you talk about Metroid, aside from the later games like Metroid Prime. Uh, this game is really, really good. It's it's much bigger than you think it is. It's got a huge, uh, mostly open world. There's things you can't reach, but uh, you have a lot of avenues that you can explore and check out that are optional and uh, definitely set the stage for a lot of games that would follow as far as exploration and, uh, you know, gathering of items and things like that go. Uh, Super Punch-Out! This game is very hard if you want to make it all the way to the end. <laughs> Basically, you play as Little Mac, who you may remember from seeing him in Super Smash Bros. Uh, he is a very small guy who fights a lot of very large guys. And that's not a very good description of this game. But basically it is a boxing game with some strange mechanics and some patterns that you have to learn or you will lose a lot. Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, regarded by many to be one of the best, if not the best, Zelda game of all time. I would say that was true until Breath of the Wild came out, but then again, a lot of people don't consider it even the same kind of thing, so there's that debate for you. Uh, I've never actually played this game more than like the first probably hour of it, so this is another thing I really want to dive into and check out more. And uh, yeah, this one's this one's gonna be fun to experience. It's a, it's a large open world. There's a lot of things that you can explore and do in whatever order you wish. Uh, but there's definitely a smarter order to it. Kind of like Mega Man bosses where you wanna make sure you go to the right place with the right item. It's kind of similar with this game, but uh, there's a lot of freedom as well. And it has a really good story, so that's cool. Uh, and finally, Super Mario World 2. Yoshi's Island. <laughs> Sorry about that, I had to sneeze. Uh, Yoshi's Island uh, is definitely a, a very large departure from Super Mario World 1. Uh, the gameplay mechanics and story and everything is, well, it's vastly different, and I'm not sure why they called it Super Mario World 2 other than to try to sell it to people who had Super Mario World 1, I guess, but it's a very unique game, and it definitely spawned a lot of interesting games beyond it, re uh, revolving around Yoshi, and uh, Baby Mario was introduced here, which is an interesting and strange sort of scenario that became a time paradox later on. But, um, but yeah, definitely an interesting game that I'll probably have to take a better look at nowadays. And uh, yeah, that brings us back around again. So... Uh, another couple things I'll touch on real quick. We've got the uh, menu up here. So there's display. And uh, if I click on that, you can see we do 4, 3, pixel perfect, and CRT filter. 
Then there's also the frame, which you can control and have different framing for each thing, which is kind of cool, I think. Uh, if we, let's see, this one's, let, let's go with that one. That looks cool. And then if we go CRT filter, and then we go back, and then when we see a game, we'll, we'll mess with it a little bit back and forth. But uh, then we go to options, uh, my gameplay demo. What does that even mean? Classic demo, screen burn and reduction. What, what, what are these? All right, looked it up real quick, now I know. Uh, classic demo is basically when you're on the screen that a demo of the game plays. Uh, it would just normally be whatever you would see on the idle screen back in the day. My gameplay demo actually uses footage from one of your own times playing the game and plays that back as part of the intro. So that's kind of cool. And of course, burn and reduction is just a thing that I don't know how important that is in this day and age, but it used to be more important when uh, people had TVs that could have burn in on them. Uh, language, we saw that at the beginning. Uh, you can see the different options you have there. Uh, legal notices, probably telling me that I'm going to be fully copyrighted to no end. Okay. <laughs> and manuals. View the original game manuals and other information on your smart device. Oh, that's cool. So you can scan this with your phone and I guess uh, get all the manuals for the games. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's, that's a nice touch. Uh, also, we have uh, suspend point lists. Now, I currently don't have any suspend points, but basically, I'm pretty sure that you can have four save states per game, or is it just four games with save states? I can't really remember. I think it's four per game. Um, maybe. We'll see. But it's one or the other of those two things. Um, but basically, this game has saves, or this console has save states. So, games that revolved around systems that if you ran out of lives you had to start the whole game over or start a very hard level over or whatever you can combat that by doing a save state also if you're in the middle of an extremely difficult say mario world level and you're just like i don't want to have to make this jump a, a, a million times and use up all my lives you can put a save state there and then you'll be able to just load from there and not use up all your lives. Now, obviously a lot of people see that as cheating um, and it's not a system that I intend to abuse, but it's definitely helpful, I find, uh, as a Let's Player to be able to do a save state sometimes in a place that has, doesn't have a natural save so that you can quit and then come back to that point without loading a save that was maybe way before that point. So that, that's useful as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show off one game so that we can see the uh, screen options and things like that. Uh, and I guess I'm gonna start with Donkey Kong Country. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I said before, it's important to me nostalgically as the uh, first game, video game console game I ever owned. Uh, so let's go ahead and check it out. So as you can see in the CRT mode, we get the scan lines, which some people like, some people don't like. I've never been a real fan of it myself, but it is what it is, you know? It's a fun thing. And uh, it's there for people that are sticklers for the tradition and all that. And uh, we're gonna go ahead, get into the game and show it off here. Uh, file three we have one player two player contest and two player team and we are going to go ahead into the first level jump out here I gotta remember the buttons there we go <laughs> we run in here and no my banana horde is gone so this looks really well, it plays really well. The buttons on the controller, super responsive, feel nice. Uh, it's it's crazy to feel this again, this, this controller in my hands that used to be such a big part of my life. And then I moved on to controllers that were actually normal sized. <laughs> so it's a little hard to, to come back to. 
Uh, I still remember all the things. Hidden bananas. Uh, Diddy in there. Switch with Diddy. Let's go ahead and go up here. I believe there's... Yeah, bananas hidden there. We go down here and drop. There's a barrel that you can throw to kill enemies or... You can jump on it and ride. But I'm not going to do that. Because if we do, we'll miss out on something that I want to show off next. So let's switch to Diddy. Let's get ready to do this right, if I can. Alright, I already missed one. There's a balloon up here that we've already missed. But we got a cartwheel jump. Oh, I'm so out of practice. No, we've messed up already. Hold on. How did I... There we go. I'm, I'm, I'm not very good at this anymore, unfortunately. But yeah, you can kind of go in midair for a while with his cartwheel. So we missed a couple of them there, unfortunately. But uh, let's go ahead and up here, kill the vulture. Grab that, I believe. Yep, bananas here as well? No, okay. Let's grab this. And here's Rami the Rhino. Gonna blast through into the bonus area. Get a balloon. And we're gonna bust out the other side, get the G. Get that. Get this. It's another bonus area. And we messed up. <laughs> Basically, you get three of the same kind, and then you get that item. Uh, those gold animal tokens, if you get three of them, send you to a bonus level with that uh, particular animal so that you can get uh, special stuff. What's cool here is as you hit the end of the level, it turns to night. And if you go back, you can kind of look through the level again as it looks in the dark, which is kind of a nice touch, I think. Uh, it means nothing, of course, unless you forgot something and wanted to come back for it. But uh, it's a cool touch that you can kind of just explore again in the dark. But uh, we'll go ahead and... Actually, hold on. I thought so. I know all the secrets, man. And I think if I can manage to jump... Um, hold on. No. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, boy. I know all them secrets. So, yeah. Um, if you're interested, I played through this game on my uh, channel here a ways back. And you can check that out. Uh, I'll try to remember to link the playlist in the description. If not, just go to my channel page, hit the little search thing, and look for Donkey Kong Country. That was a fun playthrough. Uh, so if I... How do I get back to the menu? That's the question I would have. Oh, we entered this level. Did not mean to. How do I get back? Um... Alright, I looked it up because I couldn't figure it out. But it's the reset button on the SNES Classic. Let me reach over here and hit that. That takes you back to the menu. Now down there you'll see a little thing showing where I left off, a little picture of the game. If I hit down on the D-pad, I can then choose which one of these things I want to save it in. Press Y, and there it is. So it is four save states you can have. So basically if you want to be save stating your way through a game, and you want multiple save states, then you're probably only going to be able to do that with one game. Uh, if you want one save state for multiple games, then you can do four at the same time, basically. So that's pretty neat. That's a neat touch. Uh, so yeah, we have a safe state you see now for that. You can come down here and look at it. We can uh, load that. Uh, and yeah, that's neat. I like it. Alright, so as for the display options... Whoops, wrong thing. Uh, let's look at it in Pixel Perfect and see what that looks like. We'll also try, I don't know, a different one of those. So let's... Uh, whoops. Go ahead and 
load that. Okay, now you'll see we're in pixel perfect mode, which it doesn't have the scan lines. You can see the pixels pretty clearly there. And you can see that it's not stretched to fit the screen better. There's a little bar at the bottom and top as well. So that's interesting. We come back here and just go standard four, three. Actually, hmm, there's a little thing at the top and bottom anyway. I was wrong about that. Let's pick another random, I guess this one, whatever. That's fine. And, uh, oh, oh, there's a rewind function too. I didn't even see that. So rewind. And then we can pick a spot where we want that to end. Oh, I see. Ah, that's interesting. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I like that. All right. We'll jump back in here. Now you'll see the uh, the 4 3 one. So it's a little wider than the pixel perfect, I guess. Is that the difference? I guess. Yeah. All right, cool. I like it though, it's neat. All right, so that's gonna be that. Uh, and just a final little note, as I was saying before, uh, for example, the, the power thing, it comes with a USB cable that has a power adapter on it that you can also take off and then plug into a USB port to power the SNES Classic, which makes it good for travel and things like that if you have you know, a way of powering that. Uh, and yeah. So many games to choose from. Cool, cool collection of games here. And uh, display options and all that stuff, which is very nice. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun to be had here. I'm glad I finally have one of these. And uh, you'll definitely be seeing some stuff from this. Uh, and I hope that uh, you have enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to hammer the like button, share with your friends, subscribe if you're new to join the Wolf Pack. I do a lot of different gaming videos. You'll see some more stuff like this. And I also have a daily stream series that has been going for over 600 days over on Twitch. So you should definitely follow me over there and check that out. I'm an affiliate, so you can subscribe and get emotes and things like that. Um, and we play a lot of different games over there as well, including games with viewers. So be sure to check that out. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to handle this. I kind of am tempted to do like a series where I do one of each episode, like one episode on each of these games where I play like 15, 20 minutes of each one in order. Uh, except I don't think I'd do alphabetical. I think I would do uh, release date. I think that would make the most sense, right? So yeah, I'd have to figure out which, where that starts. That uh, is probably, would start with Super Mario World and end with Star Fox 2 would make the most sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Anyway, that's something I'll think about. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do, and uh, I'll see you guys next time with something else for more. Bye!